Round three. Fight. Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. Here we go. It's a particular beautiful morning today. Yeah. Isn't it? Sun is shining figuratively and literally. And we're going to keep on working with this uh, new favorite toy that uh, you, the viewers, taught me about yesterday. And it's the modules and interfaces um, framework for designing the Mar machine that we're going to use. So every arrow is an interface, every box is a module. But what I specifically want to do today is that I want to um, start to write the uh, PBS, the product breakdown structure. So uh, you go here and you can see it in its full glory. So um, let's just quickly run through some of my plans for this stream. I'm going to review the comments on the PBS. I see some useful stuff already there. And then we're going to do block diagrams. We're going to transfer what we figure out in the block diagrams into the PBS. Then I'm going to try to experiment with using the same structure for the design requirements, which is probably not really by the book, but who cares if we're going to make a world tour anyway, right? <laughs> How you are you it. today, Sir 3K? I feel particularly great today. I don't know what it is. The sun is shining outside. Everything is golden. I feel like we made some amazing progress the latest, the late, the few last few days. Yeah. I really love that we're starting to get into actual work and for some viewers it might seem strange that it all started with sketching in CAD and now we're back into making all these documents and lists and stuff but this is where the real work happens and I know all of you engineers out there like you're you're cheering on this is the way to do it plan for real not like the first two machines where the planning went on afterwards no it was the planning all... was done with angle grinding <laughs> <laughs> very 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 good um observation sir 3k we we uh, planned with the angle grinder and uh, it failed so um let me start by looking at the comments here and resolving them so uh, this is PBS. This is where I want to work uh, in the beginning of the stream. I think I can do quite a lot quite quick. Jelle is saying, as an engineer, I will let you know this concept comes from the field of systems engineering. I don't know if you have read into it already, but given the complex uh, interfaces M3 will face, I would recommend you look into some theory of it. So thanks, Jelle, for that uh, systems engineering. Um, and I saw this one from, from, from Koi. Let me see. I'm having issues with the zoom level here. Please, please uh, be patient. There you can see it better. Koi Remy, transportation is a top level module along with the MM3 as a whole. The interface between them is overall size, defining the machine dimensions and container size. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant comment, Koi. Um, Yes, thank you. Uh, so um, I'm going to resolve that comment and we're going to uh, go into our our module and we're going to add transportation in here. And I'm also curious to see where machine states could fit in, in into this image. Um, so top level. Hmm. Okay, so it's actually above here then. So we have zero, 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 0001 done. And maybe the reprogramming. I, I was thinking about... So... Someone put in the design requirements like um, that the, the machine has different states. It's uh, being moved, it's being played, it's being reprogrammed, it's being stored. And asleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that's a sub uh, state of the being stored, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah there we go. Um, so <laughs> I think, um, where do I put this? Um, so is it a, is it actually a zero 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 one then? I think this is what Koi means. Let me see if I can uh, zoom in a little bit better here. Um, it's gonna be another of those days where the screen is just uh, moving around. Zero Take your seasick P. 
pills. Yes. Seasick pills? Nausea pills. Transportation. And Corsian's perfect says, hi, H3K. So, small weather cam will come back or not. I know that's a fan <laughs> favorite. The old timey weather cam live from France. Uh, who knows? Maybe it would make a comeback. But if you would have a live cam inside my brain and the weather inside there, it is so shiny and nice in there right now. <laughs> the sun is shining. It's warm and cozy. It's full blast summer right in my head right now. Woo! <laughs> so I'm going to give these modules a dotted line around them because they are not mechanical modules of the machine. Oh, maybe that's in unnecessary, actually. Um, Interesting trans- question from Fredward. Quick question for you guys. Is this PBS for the MVP? If so, are drums really part of the MVP? It seems like MMX is still throwing punches. Um, yeah, like I said in the uh, summary on the main channel yesterday, um, the real MVP minimum viable product is only the vibraphone. So you're right. Drums are not part of the minimum viable product. Although, like... I don't think I'm going to like build a marble machine with only vibraphone, but I think it can help us to know where to start and to set the correct foundations for the beginning of the design. Yeah. Um, and Jep Bernards, I'd say alongside the instruments making it 06, I guess the transportation, right? Or yeah, am that's I what wrong? I that's what I thought first. Um, because if if we look at a normal, um, if we look at, for example, these, there's always one thing at the top. So in all these block diagrams, there's like the thing is on the top. Yeah, let's do alongside. Thank you. That's actually what I wanted to do. But then in Corey's comment, I just like a top level module, but maybe it's down here. So you know what? I think 06 is transport is 06 is um actually everything that is ready for the reprogramming 06 is reprogramming and extras uh, this is out of can frame we get me. a zoom out yeah yeah so i'm not happy with this and i'm not happy with this let me see if i can do an in between solution here sorry for this mellanläge Yep. Um. In Yuyasha says Martin, don't mix states with the block diagram. Maybe make a new page and on that describe the states of the machine. I guess the state is not strictly needed in the block diagram. No, I I agree. I yep. agree. Um. But as a product breakdown structure, I think so. These will not be states. These will be. Um, uh, physical items um, that are necessary uh, for the for the product uh, for the tour and stuff. So yeah. we have 06 reprogramming and extras, and then I'm gonna make an 07, uh, which is transportation. Ah, there we go. And I think Lee Smith summed it up beautifully here. Lee Smith says, when it comes to building, build as if it would be a full be the full product, but include only the MVP critical items initially, add the rest later. Yeah, focus up that so we know that the MVP will deliver five star performances and then add the rest. I think that's it very much helps. Um, I'm going to remove these little arrows. God, I'm not showing sharing this in a nice way. I'm trying. Sharing is caring, you know. <laughs> Wahoo! There is no stopping. <laughs> the hype train has the left the station. Train, yeah. Oh my God. Choo-choo! <laughs> like Ilva doing the choo-choo after chain breaker. Yeah. That's me right now. Yep. Choo choo. That's an inside baseball joke right there. Yeah. For you future potential viewer who gets a joke. I'm Saw happy. it here first. Saw it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Programming and extras transportation. So I I think it fits really nicely in here. And um 
we're gonna clean this one up later, like OCD clean it up for, for fun. I'm not gonna spend time on that now because now I wanna get to the meaty part here. Now I wanna get to where we're going to inform the PBS um, from uh, our block diagram. But let me first burn through all these beautiful comments here a little quickly. And before you start with that, uh, Mandracule has a quick question. What program are you using? I could have used this a few times at work. And it's called Draw.io, right? Yeah, Draw.io and you need a Confluence account to use it. Um, so Draw.io is the website that will take you there. It was uh, it's very, very fun. I'm not so good at it yet, but I, I love it. Yep. Now we go deep into the yep. PBS. So, A. Warner. Hi, Martin. I have some thoughts on hierarchical design from a digital engineering perspective, if you're interested. Warning, it's long. <laughs> so, uh, Warner have um, done exactly what I've asked you. If you want to make a long uh, contribution to link to a Google document that you created yourself. And... Oh, yes, it is long, but it is... Um, brilliant, it I can is, see it. It is brilliant, exactly, because this is... And, like, it's um, a fountain of knowledge. I should... Yeah. Um, philosophy... Uh, I think I'm going to read this on the stream later. Yeah. Um, because it's not too long, and I think it looks very full of good information. So I'm not going to resolve that comment yet. Uh, testing, Amir have done the same thing. Super important issue is testing. Every product made. Uh, these are great. These are great stuff. But I'm not going to resolve the comment, which means I have to return to it later. So thanks, Amir, for that one. Um, anonymous, instead of MM3, call it MMY because Y comes after X, but also because Y sounds like Y. And for everything that is done, you need to constantly ask, why am I doing this? Uh, that's a fun comment from Anonymous. I just want to, uh, in sure between here, story. from Doro, no draw IO can be used without Confluence. That's the way I did it. It can be used as an add on in Google Docs, for those who are wondering. Uh. That sounds better because I don't even understand Confluence. <laughs> you got no Confluence. Um, okay, so there's discussions here. Um, okay, I, 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 I checked them through. I'm going to leave them there and I'm going to return to them later. So let's now do the first historical... Um, yeah, this is history making right here. I, I hope so. I hope so. So zero one drive system, um, we have it here, and then I'm gonna add a line under some a few lines under it, and I'm gonna flesh out um, the next. Oh, the numbers. Yeah, the numbers. Yes. <laughs> this is very satisfying. Um, I'm just gonna take this if I can maybe copy paste. No, I should. Uh, I think you can write. Let's yeah, I, I can, but it's not it's not smart. Okay. Um, oh, it's some other formatting here. Let's delete this row. Zero one zero one. Can we have these coming out um, automatically? Maybe if we do this zero one zero two. You think Google Sheet will know what I want to do? Yeah. Yay, smartness. Um so we do have Can you bring this one up on a small screen, Hannes? I can read it from you. Like up in the corner. Uh the diagram? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is it linked somewhere? I can find it. Um I have an idea. You know what? You can email me a link to it, perhaps. I did. Uh, I can go between them. I'll go between them. Okay. Uh, okay. If that's easy. I don't. I think. I think so. Um, give me one second. I'm going to bring it up. I have an idea. 
I'll take a screenshot. I'll bring it up on screen. <laughs> um, you know what? I know the audience wants to see this. Weather cam? No. These two guys, hard at work focusing. <laughs> and here we go. RB Production. The Martin's new name, Smartin. <laughs> oh. Well, I like that one. And as Inuyasha says, smarter every day. Blink emoji. Ah, with Dustin. <laughs> Okay, check this out. I think I got it. Oh, wow. What a rock star. <laughs> but I can't read it. Oh, this is a mess, everyone. Satish says you can paste it into the Excel sheet. The whole thing. Ooh, the, the image file. Smart. Smart Satish. Now I can read it. Um... So we have um, crank, pedal, crank shaft, flywheel, brake. I'm skeptical of that name. Gear train. And Vitali Dunkerly says, Good morning. Looks tired with that emoji. And how frustrating is it to be met with this highly optimistic dude just sitting here saying, Woo! all the time <laughs> early in the morning for you. <laughs> and Doro says, And so happy to see you not doing CAD right now. Yeah, I, I so con when we're diverging and converging. Yeah. So I needed to go through the little CAD um, phase in the beginning, and but I agree with you, Doro, uh, because I I needed to, I needed to get all the design out of my head that I had. Yep. So it was kind of I kind of knew that I would go back to a little bit more like from scratch. Um, and as we always said in the beginning, this is uh, like sketching. So CAD to just get out your ideas. Yeah. Instead of we having to look at your <coughs> awesome painting skills on the iPad, <laughs> we got to see it in CAD. <laughs> I completely agree with you, Doro. Um, so I'm going to give each level its own color, just so it's easy. So I think these ones are going to be green. I like this green. And then these... Um, the next level things can be oh that's may maybe annoying i mean, it's going to come white in between there so we have blue green and yellow i think i think this is okay so then what ha what will happen later is that when we make a part from the for the crank um that is going to be zero one zero one just as an example here zero one um I'm going to give it some more rows here. And if I do the same here. So under each yellow, so it's not going to be colors everywhere. And here's all the parts. So like crank handle example. And just throwing this out there from Satish, you can group the rows and sub rows. Group rows? What? How does that work? Interesting. So I just wanted to show you like an example of how it will look when we have uh, parts. I'm going to take that away. And then let's continue with... <coughs> So I'm going to take away this disclaimer. Ha. It is the PBS now. <laughs> um, okay, and Satish adds, and collapse them as you need. So, okay, you group them and you can collapse them. Wow. That is interesting. 
I'm thinking of just deleting all this. Select mm. the rows and then right click to group. Okay, we have to try this. We have to try. It's a cool feature, right? So I'm going to select the O1. I wonder on what level though. Probably on the crank level. I think I want all the green ones visible. So I'm gonna um Let's try and see what happens. Oh wait, where am I? Maybe on this level. So with these parts. Um view more row actions. Group group rows. rows. Okay. Ooh, oh wow, so there's that a plus is now. Sweetness. Oh wow. But then if I make a new row, can I drag it straight into Ooh, yes. I can drag it straight into the group. Or what happened here? Did something break here now? What is this? Ah no, what happened here? Uh, is that adding another sub row? It added like it also became grouped. So this is, uh, this is, um, right now we don't know it. You don't want, you, okay, now it looks good. No, and now it looks bad. So this is sometimes when you're trying to be too smart, uh, it's not actually efficient. You but know what? Let's throw aesthetics out the window for now. Do it your way. We can clean this up later and no. make those work perhaps. Yeah. I, I, Maybe if I do it again now, if I do this now, and I group these. No, now it's a group in a group. <laughs> no, groupception. <laughs> um, let me see how far back I can do by just regretting everything. It's separated into two groups. Yeah. yeah. That's what we don't want. So perhaps I have to be here insert one so if i insert rows like this it looks like they're all inserted into the one and the same group this is actually beautiful because the document becomes so long um wait i grouped it on the drive system so now i have to ungroup we all can learn together uh ungroup rows okay good we're ungrouped and I'm going to move this first. Now I'm going to group this. Uh, was it from Doro? Uh, Satish. Satish. Satish Kumar. Satish Hero, thanks for being here and always coming up with the good stuff. Uh, this was a super cool trick. I'm going to definitely use it. Nice, nice, nice. And a lovely comment here from Inu Yasha. Martin's unwa unwavering belief in his dream <laughs> inspires me every day to follow my own dream. I can't thank him enough for that. Love you all. Right back at you. Love you all out there. You are the true MVPs. Screw the vibraphone. You are the MVPs. <laughs> Totally agree. This is something I don't understand. I'm grouping row nine, but when I'm hiding it, the first row disappears, which I think is a stupid idea. So, because I, I want like a headline. So, I want like, I, I want to see the first row of the group. That's what I thought that it would, how it would work. So, I'm now I'm going to try to group from row, from 10 and this the minus comes on the see the minus is on the row above no it's on nine right yeah so because i i started with 10 so but i guess i guess that's just the way you all these rows are becoming like disappearing into the plus sign now i understand how it works this is the way yeah okay let's move on um instruments so I'm going to move all this, add a thousand more rows. Just going to move this down. There we go. 
And here we go. Sounds like our, our air humidifier is slurping coffee behind us. <laughs> Zero two oh one. Zero two oh two. How many do we need right now? It's six. The symbols in there are great. We have kick, snare, hi -hat. How many times have you heard me read these things out? Not Symbol. enough. I want to hear them more. How many times have you heard me play them on a functional mom machine? Don't get me to say that. Never. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. Here we go. There we go. Let's go for the next one. Marble cycle. So I'm going to. Um, and Doro says, I'm just going to keep when, when there's beautiful tips coming up and you can group also on more levels. So group them all yellows and have just the green headlines. But that's something for later on. <clears throat> group them all and you can. So group all yellows and have just green headlines. That's something. More. Yeah, so we can group them at each. Tr it would be beautiful to group at each tree level. Yeah. Um, I just want um, everyone to see kind of the documents yes. I'm working on. But yes. that's for later on. You're absolutely right. So let's do... How many do we need here? Right now, five. It's going to be more later. Oh, three. Oh, one. So um, the reason I'm, what happened here? Oh, it's because it's like a, I'm gonna format the whole document as if it's plain, as if it's uh, plain text. And that's why you couldn't see this uh, number correctly. O three O two. And there we have it. Um, marble lift. Uh, divider. Marble buffer. Maybe I should have shorter words. No, it's good to say what it is. You know what, Martin? I have a small question for you. Yeah. Aren't we on step three now in the list? Mm, yes. Yay! Well done. Well done. Oh, no sound. No, but the visual is enough. Is that because of the item mixer? Could be. It doesn't matter. Just making sure everything works. There we go. Give us another whack. Let us hear it. There okay, we good. go. Whacked because we fixed the sound mixer. <laughs> um... 0305 is a uh, marble catch. The reason I'm loving this PBS thing is that it helps me break down uh, the machine. So it's a pronet breakdown system and it's... Um, some people will think that I'm, I'm going into this prematurely, yeah. that this is something that should happen much later that it's not necessary now and we're going to change this around. So I have to manually change this around a lot. Um, but I, it's the reason where I'm going with this is that I'm going to use this um, to kind of get a structure in the design requirements because yep. I don't know where to start with it. It's so big task. So here I, I can just say like, I can start to write 0206 vibraphone. And that's going to mean that the design requirements are not completely design agnostic, but um, we don't have to go super, super, super strict on that. So let's uh, uh, crop out to the next category, music um, control. This is kind of like building the machine in text form. Yeah, which I think is, which I think is the thing that I didn't do on the first machines. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy it. Yeah, the sense of structure and order. Yeah, as long as it doesn't turn into um, like, oh, what's the word? Um, 
procrastination. Yeah, it's procrastination, but I wanted to have a strengthening word in front of it. Um, like vibrant procrastination, uh, like crazy procrastination. Chat, help me out. Uh, like when, when something is unleashed, like yeah. unhinged procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> it was not the word I was searching for. As long as it's not turned out to unhinged procrastination. You know which one I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, program switch. So here is the um, music control submodule. Um, do we have marble gates in this one as well? Hang on here a bit. Hang on here. Did you spot a mole? So we have marble gates in the marble cycle. And we have marble gates in the music control. That... Hmm... That feels wrong. Um... May maybe, maybe the marble cycle is the marble drop. Now, that's the same part. I don't like to have these in two categories. No. We have them here and we have them there. So let's see where it should belong. And we have Linus Öberg coming in with obsessive procrastination. And <laughs> that was not the one, but that's good. Organ also. guy. Hey. Enthusiastic procrastination. Maybe excessive procrastination. Maybe that was reckless it. procrastination. <laughs> and Tim Dirk Mega, of course. <laughs> All of those are, are are suitable. So let's let's try to think. I mean, the marble gates has to be inside the marble cycle, and the music control is about how we're controlling the music. So the program switch. Programming wheel to registrators, through the program switch. Dora, a beautiful comment. Could be a topic for our weekly Discord procrastination motivation support group meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. Um, Unbridled procrastination. Um, that, that, I think, was the one I was... The rambler. The rambler, that's the word I was looking for. That was the exact word. Unbridled procrastination. Yep, Bernard's, I'd say the gates belong to music control. The cycle just keeps them fed. So, me, the music control, I think, I think what we end up here is um, an interface. So I think the marble gates, because it, marble lift is a physical thing. Then it goes to divider, physical thing. Then it goes to the buffer, physical thing. Then it goes into the gates and, and being dropped, a physical thing. It hits the... Um... Okay, wait, we have a, another great example here, reference. Um, so here's an input process output. This is, this is an interface. This is also not a module. I think it's going to be in Marble Cycle, but we're going to turn this one into an interface thing. Um... So let's make a new kind of symbol for an interface. Or maybe just dot the line. No, dot line mean, meant something else. Arrows is an interface. Can I have an arrow with a symbol at the end, maybe? Um, Inuyasha says, this is no longer procrastination. Think of it, he actually made a plan. He already made the decision to stop. If his plan isn't going to work out, I can't see any procrastination anymore. Wonderful. <laughs> and we're also not procrastinating. I looked at my old On The Phone is a new music instrument video this morning, and I also thought it was a quite, quite, quite nice intro with the spooky music. And I was like, that was like, those kind of well-produced videos, they were procrastination away from the marble machine. And these live streams are not, so um, I, I agree. Let's see here. I think we're going to note here is an interface. Um, so I'm going to put at the end of this arrow, yes, a text. Let me see if I can. 
zoom in on this perhaps. Oh, you can read it there. Um, Clear as day. Interface um, marble gate. We have we have to we have to fix this later. Um, border color. No, no border. So let's go into interfaces later, but this means that loop wheel has to change number to 04 and loop beaters has to change to 05. And then over here, I think we're going to do the same thing. This should not have a box around it. Uh, so it's not a reference anymore. It's an interface, if I think correctly here. Oh, this is feels so. This is like giving like engineer ASMR tingles on the in the in the brain, <laughs> because it really helps Hannes to structure what is what. It is so helpful. It's gonna take me time to get into it, but this is this is um, really nice. This is really nice. So there we go. Adrian Higgins. A reference is a, is good to use when there are different types of things. For example, bass, vibra, etc. Marble gates are all going to be the same. Marble gate triggers in music control and marble gate in cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So so the triggers is the interface here. It's a trick. It's the action. It opens the gate. The gate is located in another module, but but it interfaces with the gate. Um, <coughs> so then we're on the good spot. And Carl Mel has a nice little explanation. Also, think of it as an audio signal. Your carrying wave is the marble flow. The gate is only modulating the flow. Hence, the flow is the output of the marble cycle and the gate of the music control. Wow, um, your carrying wave is the marble flow. The gate is only modulating the flow, as the flow is the output of the marble cycle and the gate of the music control. That's very, very beautifully put. Um, let's see here. Where did my image go? Sitting home there. Okay, sorry for that. <laughs> So that's an old, it's not uh, live, that image anymore. So now 04 is loop wheel. 05 is loop beaters. We're going to expand on this a lot in the future. Uh, Fred Ward, with a reminder, you probably don't need to worry about interfaces until you're writing the design requirements for each module. Yep. So yeah, then we will find even more stuff. So that's 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 exactly what I hope what I hope to do. Um, so frame. Let's see here. And how is you doing? I'm three weeks late thanks to notifications, but very happy to see my favorite duo back on the live stream grind. Missing Hannes three thousand, but glad to see Hannes. Thanks you two for another stream. So nice to finally have you here. That's uh, sad with notifications. Uh, and that can sometimes happen on YouTube, but be sure that you have uh, subscribed and liked the videos and you can check your notification status. Like, I think that's the battle right that people always talk about. <laughs> so that you always get notifications when we're live streaming because we do this almost daily on this uh, Wintergarten Live YouTube channel. And summaries on the regular Wintergatan channel every Wednesday. So we're so glad to have you here. And as you can see, I upgraded to a more fleshed out version. <laughs> I'm not in an iPad anymore, at least. So glad to have you here. Thank you so much. Definitely. And I'm glad to be in the same room as another living and breathing uh, human being. <laughs> Um, the herm, herma, hermit, uh, um, hermit life um, uh, has now become a duo hermit life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> uh, let's see what am I doing? Oh, five. So these are only example prog will shaft holders. You know, I'm I'm not going to. These were only examples. I'm going to actually do it like this. I'm gonna change in the. I want to take away these stupid examples because I only did them for the. Um, for the live stream. So I'm going to have to remove the kick drum bracket. I'm gonna change feet to be O2. Um, and I'm gonna remove these. That was just examples. Um, it's a feet interfacing in two ways with the frame. I guess it's only one actually. But of course, your the feet are adjustable, so you you could say that the the frame is like resting on the feet, and then when you lower the feet, the feet is like pushing the machine up. Is it a two way interface? It's probably very tech, very. It doesn't matter. I'm going to make a two way interface here. <laughs> Boom. Um, with an undotted line. Okay, reprogramming an extra. So now I can hide this uh, image and we can go into looking closely at, um, here we go. I can, now I've figured out how to zoom better. Reprogramming an extras. Uh, what do we need here? Uh, I just want to make some examples. Extra material. So here's the like making of documentary going to be in the bonus material of the Blu-ray disc. <laughs> <laughs> Programming pins. So I'm thinking about everything that is loose and that can might be needed for the machine. Um, programming pins. I want to I want to call the programming things for the loop drum something else. 0602 um, loop pins. Why not? What else? Chat and Sir 3K. Yeah, let's see what chat comes up with. Just wanted to hear, uh, J9 asks, will you keep the MMX or use some of the parts for the new machine? And that is a no. And the MMX will be uh, transferred to Rudesheim in Germany to Siegfried's Mecha Mechanische Musikkabinett. Is that the name? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where it will be displayed alongside the original marble machine. So people can go to that museum and take a look at it. So no parts will be used on from the old machine. And um, um, wait, how do I do this? Uh, I once rebuilded a kitchen. And um, most people, when they renovate a kitchen, they just throw everything out. And I thought the kitchen was pretty good. Um, and I wanted to be like, um, I thought I was good at building. That It was from the time where I thought I was good at building. <laughs> um, and so I was like, oh, I don't have to throw everything out. Uh, I'm going to just build, I'm going to modify what exists and build like around it and make it better. So I rebuilt like all the cupboards and stuff like that to new dimensions. And like half a year later, I realized why people are just throwing out everything and starting from scratch with a blank slate. So reusing, um, reusing parts. I don't, I'm not getting this to work. Reusing parts is super, um, difficult. And this is how you do it like this. The reason I'm pulling these dotted lines here, because these are not interfacing. Oh, yeah. These are just like physical things. So loop pins. Colin Reed, the marbles slash balls oh. themselves are loose elements. Perfect. Thank you, Colin. I forgot about those marbles. Um, and we could have like stupid stuff like uh, uh, 04 spare bass strings. I mean, oh, yeah. things like that. Drumsticks or beaters or stuff like Ooh. that. Nice one. Oh, five. 
spare uh, drumsticks. Wait, maybe spare parts should just be yeah and sub assemblies of that. Yeah, so let because we're staying high level on yep. on this first level, so spare parts is including everything, and then um, we might have. So here's here's a question. I don't know. Um, o five. Um, Secondary frog wheel. That's a big item right there. And then we have the secondary loop wheel. And there we have Satish Kumar, a true Gretzky. Programming drums and loop wheel yep. will also be part of this. Secondary loop wheel. Um, so here's a question. When you need to reprogram the loop wheel, it needs to sit on some kind of nice structure so it's easy to handle and easy to um, to kind of uh, rotate. So you just sit it down in a temporary thing. A programming station. Yeah, programming station. So that should be, of course, inside this secondary prog wheel if, yeah. if they're programming station. Um, Important question here from Rabbit101. Hannes, Martin rated your mustache the other day, so now it's your turn. What would you rate Martin's hair? Did you rate my mustache? I, I don't remember. I don't remember this either. But I would rate the hair solid 7 out of 10. <laughs> I love it when you go crazy and let it grow. Get unruly. Okay, let's get unruly. Let's not cut it until the machine is... <laughs> no, I'm not going <laughs> to... But today, we're both sitting in hats, so you can guess that we have not the best hair days, both of us today. The hat is definitely at the high the hair. <laughs> I met my, my friend's mother the other day, and she was like, oh, you look so grown, grown up. No, like three months ago, you look more grown up in, in shorter hair. And then so I was like, a week ago, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm always cutting my own hair. So I was like, I'm just going to cut myself short now, so I become look serious. And then I feel I cut it too short. And now everyone says, including Sir 3K, that I should have long hair. Okay. So hat and until I mean hair long is... hair. Oh, you want like <laughs> this? Yes. <laughs> Shoulder. Okay. Let's. Uh, <laughs> programming pins, loop pins, marbles, spare parts, secondary prog wheel, secondary loop wheel. It's kind of nice. Um, I think I'm happy with that. And when we're here, let's let's go for transportation as well. Um. <laughs> Pelle Pelster, joining to have a small timeout from boring daily software development work. And what do I see? <laughs> Martin fiddling around with architecture diagrams in Confluence. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, um, it's it's no no rest for the weary or what what is the expression? Yeah, and chat doesn't miss anything. Rabbit one hundred one. Martin rated your mustache eleven out of five. I'm cheap with my rating then. <laughs> eleven out of five, and I got seven out of ten. <laughs> okay. What a friend I am. Transportation cases maybe cases and then someone said even to list a container here like yeah. which which is pretty cool uh kind of like truck truck like we don't know here we don't know but it's of course if we're gonna be able to tour we have to think about this stuff and then there's interfaces what did there was a nice comment container um Well, this is early days. I'm going to add them there. It's better than nothing. And I'm going to try to make this trick again. Yes. There we go. Uh, so... 
Let me see how I can do this. Um, oh, I can just take a screenshot and put it on my second screen. Sometimes when you're live streaming, <laughs> things turn a little bit overcomplicated. That's the charm of it. Let's see here. Let's hope for an accidental mole whack soon. It could could easily happen. The organ guy says Dolly. Is that something in transportation? Oh yeah. Um a doll yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, thanks for that organ guy. Um let's do that. I actually want that as two. Dolly, so that's like a little sled with wheels. Um. <laughs> so I was never, I've never coded anything in my whole life, but it's obvious to me that we're going into a future where code is going to be like everything. And mo most building will be in code and then we're going to have some physical items as well. It's kind of fun to, uh, I'm never going to go into coding because uh, I just never got into it organically. So I'm probably not so good at it, but it's fun to anyway have borrowed some inspiration from the software development uh, side of things. Sir Lee Wu Jin, do you know when the machine goes his way to Rudesheim? It's only a few kilometers away from me. Oh, cool. We don't know exact dates or anything, but you can be sure that stuff will be covered here <laughs> when yeah. stuff is moving, right? You will get the info. It will happen like before the summer, but then it's going to be disassembled and probably not open um, and that's things up, like that. Yeah, that's up to Lucas. But then we'll definitely meet you there in the future on some meetup or something. Yeah. Um, it's super fun. But yeah, everything around like the museum is going to be up to Lucas. So we should try to not make promises that he has to then keep for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. Frame. Our frame was already done. So then we have a new green uh, line here. Uh, let's delete these lines. Oh, I'm so happy for this. This is beautiful. Oh, six. We have, what did we call that one? Uh, extras. Programming. My screenshot was is stupid. Programming and extras. Reprogramming and extras. That was a long name. And extras. And then while we're at it, I'm going to also make seven, which is transportation. Oh, we have the um, we have the sheets, the music sheets, the actual song templates. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna add them as a subcategory here. Is that in reprogramming? Yes. Yeah. So that should be uh, actually. The, I'm gonna add it. It 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 deserves its own thing. Um, cheat sheets. Yeah, song templates. Song templates. This project is so monstrous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, each and every square, like if we zoom out here. One square at a time. Each and every square here is like a marathon in itself. Um, but I mean, if, if we get a design that we believe in, it's going to be joyful to attack each and each and every square. So it's just about finding a design that we believe in yeah. and then it's going to like build itself a little bit. So preparation, like if preparation is the thing, uh, so here we go. Uh, 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 oh, six, oh, one. Okay, the organ guy. I said it so many times. These templates are called stencils. 
you said it exactly the right among, among number of times because from now it's called stand sales <laughs> there we go thank you organ guy song stand sales there we go it's a better name i think templates is like also understandable but may no templates is actually some more of a blank slate you're right it's not a it's not a correct word um thank you programming pins loop pins marbles imagine when we have the pbs and people can comment on the actual part i made a new cad design here's the link to my new cad design oh. of this part oh do, do you see the future compat compatibility that i'm trying to build into the system oh oh secondary uh, prog wheel i also i've talked about this earlier i would like to have an automated credit system so all of you who are contributing is like kind of automatically recorded um i would love um to have that built out maybe someone can build it somehow it's just very tricky because it's kind of going down to some some subjective decision making so we have to automate it because neither you or me wants to spend all our time taking care of the credit list but i really want to credit everyone who's making even the smallest tiniest contribution that has been used so some kind of automated crediting list um like the proof of attendance protocol POAP would be the ultimate way to do that it's free um um but so if there's someone who is very good with programming things like that maybe you can build like the automatic automated credit list and get credited you're the first person who is listed <laughs> in the credit of the credit list um especially later when we're in cad and and people are going to prototype and just cad designs out of pure lust for the project I don't want to I don't want those kind of contributions to go like unnoticed and everyone being here right now early days um and I also don't want people like um to be so invested so they get too disappointed when we realize that that the project is impossible <laughs> <laughs> and Melixa didn't know you guys liked metal music hope you enjoyed the concert perhaps you saw the instagram post or something like that and yeah as you can see by my hair i'm a lifelong metal head and i'm just forcing martin to listen to my music and it's so very easy when it's brothers of metal because they have <laughs> melodies and i love <laughs> melodies so we love that concert and we, you can still hear it on Hannes' voice. It's still broken five days later. <laughs> so yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, I'm just forcing my music onto Martin as well. And you get to see the wonderful community that is the metal fans. Those metal fans are so dedicated. Yes. Only rivaled by Marble Machine fans. Yeah, well, that's a different category altogether. There's no one like them. You know what? We're done. Um, what? Yes, I'm going to zoom out so we can look at it in its entire glory. Wait a, wait a minute, Satish. Martin forgot the stencils. Oh. Where are those? Because they're not on my screenshot, that's why. Uh, oh, this went wrong. Um, 0607. Thank you, Satish. 0607. Down here. Oh six, oh seven. Uh, what did we call them? Song stencils. Song stencils. Should it be music stencils? Sounds better, right? Music stencils, yes. Music stencils. And another one from Robin Helm. Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thoroughly enjoying um, all of you like sending comments like that. Dolly is forgotten track. Yeah, I took the screenshot before. So Dolly is two, track is three, container is four. Um, Dolly. 
track container and we're done oh yes a glorious victory so we have our first version of the uh, Marble Machine PBS. So I'm going to give a better headline here for people who don't know what it is. Product Breakdown System. And we also learned that we have a little plus here. So here's a part for the crank. And that is kind of wonderful. <coughs> <coughs> Don't know what happened there. Too much joy over the PBS. <laughs> um, let me fix this line so everything is beautiful. And add a row, perhaps. Uh -huh. I want to remove these. Oh. Okay. Um... So, items to design requirements. Um, this gives me, I have the feeling now that I have a small little hook to grab onto, like from one part of, of the, this little number. So when we're going to start with a vibraphone, for example, I feel, okay, let's head into the 0206 land. You the know? MVP land. Yeah. It's like a Super Mario Bros. map, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 0206. Yeah, 0206. Uh, world, uh, world 6 in land 02. It's actually exactly like that. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Um, and then you can go down in a pipe and there's a whole underworld. Um, or you can climb up a little plant and there's a whole overworld. Oh! Uh, so, so this gives me kind of something to, to hold on to. Um, and I'm thinking about what to do now. So the idea for, for the stream is to... And this is... Mainly I, mainly I want to show just just to show how I'm thinking. Um, so if we go over to the design requirements... Um, I'm thinking we can write these design requirements um, sometimes. Oh, the input process output. You know what? I don't think we should go to design requirements. We should go to interfaces instead. Mm -hmm. And here is something controversial. <gasps> <laughs> <You're> Cover <laughs> your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate hype man. Um, what if we're going to list interfaces in the PBS? What? It's probably... Uh, unorthodox but imagine having parts and interfaces close by um, and I want to I want to come up with a universal language um, where was the UML post um, I want to come up with a universal language um, for interfaces because we have the very beautiful input process output um, so if we go to our diagram and we're seeing these arrows, um, I have an idea to have a unique name number for each interface. And then the sub numbering will be the input, the process, and the output. So then we can write, write the sign requirements for each interface. And we know we have to fill the input. How does it get signal in the process? What does it do with the signal? The output, how does it get what how does it get the signal out? And um, I'm thinking to list them here somehow. I never, I never seen this done, and I'm just shooting from my hip here. But I'm, it's, it's something that would suit my way of thinking. Um, 
So I'm curious to hear. I'm gonna make some kind of suggestion here, and I'm gonna. I'm curious to see what the audience think of this. So let's practice. Let's take an example. Um, the crank. I just want to say from Yep Bernard's interfaces are the design requirements for the parts. <sighs> Okay, the interfaces are the design requirements for the parts. That makes sense. That makes sense. So then the, my interface number that I'm thinking in my head that I want is actually kind of a name of a design requirement, maybe. Um, so let's take the e simplest example. <coughs> and Doro is wondering, what about cabling and mics, or are they part of interfaces? Good question. So, I thought I had... No, it's missing, actually. Instruments. Instruments and audio, maybe. Should, should it be in module 2? Because the mics are closely related to the... Or maybe the mics should be designed with each... Because sometimes when you make a... No, wait, these are not the physical... So either the microphones are going to be sub subcomponents of each instrument category or it's going to be 0207. Is there going to be a lot of different kinds of mics and audio? I mean, the bass will have a special one. Yeah, so let's keep this high level. So perhaps a sub on each is yeah. the way to go, right? It is. So the bass line box it's completely independent from the kick drum microphone, actually. It belongs to the same, like, world. But I, th I think... Oh, I'm missing a line here. Um, let's put mics and cables. Because these are, these are big. Um, these are high level. So under here, we're going to find whole Super Mario World <laughs> in each book. So let's put them under there. And Fredward says, nothing in the machine relies on the mic, so they are not part of an interface. Okay. Oh. I'm always... Isn't the mic an interface with the instrument? So the instrument makes, like, uh, sound waves, which is the output from the instrument. The mic takes that input and sends it output to the to the mixing control but it it's probably semantics yeah can you just look what the word semantics means <laughs> <laughs> i'm choosing which which interface to use as an example um because I think this one, let's let's just just have the first interface, the crank to the crankshaft. It's a little bit stupid, but I think so. Just like an E mount is an interface between a lens and a camera. I think the the screws and the the thing attaching the crank to the crankshaft is the interface. Uh, so let's. Let's practice our naming uh, practice on, on this arrow right here. You have semantics? <laughs> Often when you say it's semantics, it's, it's in a dismissal tone. That's not how I meant it this time. I, I just meant that there are some decisions we can make about what the words mean. And someone said, like, um, the UML, the Universal Modeling Language, to tip that I should, like, learn a little bit about that. And that might be interesting, but for now, 
for, for right now it's mostly important that I understand what I mean <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, and then later in the project it's more important that everyone understands what I mean um, so let's dig into this here um, I'm sure ch chat will come up with a better one that I find on Google here okay um so let's look at this arrow. Let's look closely at this arrow here. Um, so let's just give this one name here, this interface. Um, so I want to call it What about what about doing it like this? So we put we put the number of the thing that the interface comes from and then we make a, this symbol and we put the number of the thing that the interface goes to and no letters. I mean this symbol is maybe bad because it's um, should we make like an equal sign? Maybe that looks better. And I'm going to reduce the font. If you have any suggestions for a better symbol in the middle there. <laughs> um, and the equal is not good. That's like a mathematical thing. Oh, slash. Here we go. <laughs> Doesn't Slash. that look professional? So, so I'm going to copy this and here's the experimental part. I'm going to list I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm I ha I have an inkling that this could be cool. So interfaces have their own colors. The gaming general and underscore could be better. Better than slash or better than equal. Or that one. Or a slash. Okay, you see, I'm, I'm saying with space. Slash. Is it called that? What is it doing? Okay, you want to see a little Google Sheet tutorial? So I pa I copied something and I paste it and it looks awful because it takes the formatting. You undo that, you hold in shift and you paste it, shift, paste. That means you're only pasting the information and not the formatting. Okay, kids, that's nice. <laughs> uh, it's Explanation from I don't want to choose a name. An interface is always a shared property of two or more things. The interface between crank and shaft includes things like dimension of the shaft and set screws, mics and instruments to share physics. Okay, wonderful. That that that's a nice explanation that that um that relates to here. So um we're gonna give this interface a name. Crank crankshaft interface. Here and we go. Linus Öberg. Semantics is the study of words and their meaning in language. It focuses mainly on the significance of the meaning of words in a literal sense. Okay, so the the way I used it was like Sometimes when we discuss, we're actually meaning the same, but we're using different words. And of course, that's a, that is a big issue when you do collaboration. And um, it's you can collaborate better, of course, when you agree on a set uh, terms, terminology or something. Um, check this out now, Hannes, because here is something that I'm a little bit excited about. So, um,
I'm gonna make a sub. I'm gonna make like a sub. I'm gonna make a sub here, sub thing. Sub thing? <laughs> um, which is the input output. So this is gonna be called I dash I. Oh, this is so unclear. But it's 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 okay. I for input, P for process. I'm I'm curious to see what people if people think that oh, this this makes sense, Martin, or if they say, "What are you doing?" <laughs> um, this red color is annoying. What can we have? Light blue. No color. Italics for all the interfaces. What about that? And Doro with a great tip here also. Put in somewhere a legend for what the lines mean. So if those get more or you look at it at a later point in time, you still know what was what. <laughs> That's the also true for the naming now, right? Yeah. Uh, I've, I just have to first invent the naming and then, then make the legend. Um what lines you mean these lines the, the different colors or no i think it was in the in the block diagram oh yeah of course yeah that's a very good that's a great tip actually we should do that right away um and just another example of why these viewers are the best nico b Changed my username so that H3K doesn't have such a hard time pronouncing OX3F2D. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You're the best. So, um, input, process, output. Uh, so, um, Wait, maybe I don't have to have this. Um, yeah, I, I like to have this as a sub category. Um, so for this little example with the crankshaft, it's going to be very like simple. But when it comes to a marble gauge, for example, each and every of these has to be thought through and designed for. And if we kind of do that for all the interfaces on the whole machine in CAD, I think we're going to have like something, we're going to make a process that forces us to think through things. So the last thing I want to do here, I, I kind of want to, I'm procrastinating with the sign here, but it's uh, to make it, that's annoying. I want even like lighter colors. Okay, reset. Um, so let's put the, so we are on zero one. I'm wondering what order I should put them. If they should be like here. And I'm just throwing good tips up here for us uh, from Doro again. For the interfaces, put I hashtag in the name. By that, it can be easily selected at a later point in time. You don't know for what that might be needed. I like it. I hashtag. And then, but then what happens here then? Oh, these are sub. So then I'm thinking like we can do this. We can group these interfaces. Ah. You can select different parts by its category. For marble gates later on, maybe then G hashtag dot dot dot. Aha, that's not what I thought. Um, okay, I'm gonna remove that. Okay, we're gonna revisit this later. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna ungroup this. Can I do this? Ungroup these. Um, 
Oh, this is a comment from today. Possible sixth system, centralized output cable. If all instruments, signals are to plug into a central system, that system could be one part of a big audio cable or breaking out box. Interfaces could be designed by the spec. Uh, possible sixth system. Um, yes, I'm going to leave it to under the... Um, I mean, the audio handling is unrepresented in this um, this image. We should actually represent it somewhere. Oh, maybe it's um, maybe it's a dotted square. Vibraphone. So the reason that I didn't include it is that. I built the audio central into the previous machine <coughs> and on this machine I don't want to put almost any audio in equipment on the machine itself. I want to keep all the equipment off the machine. I just want to have cables um, from the microphones which leaves uh, some signal a little bit vulnerable because longer cables uh, before the microphones and stuff like that so maybe we need to put some preamps close and stuff like that. But currently currently um oh yeah so it's here it's in one of these um it's maybe a completely new genre here audio um it's like live Live performance, maybe. Um. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry for thinking so slow on these things. It just has to go. It's like gears have to be turned in the head. And a lot of teeth on those gears. Yeah. <coughs> so we need. We do need to pick up the sound of the machine. So it has definitely has to be represented. Let's do instruments and audio. So we change that. So let's go ahead and change it here. Instruments and audio. And I think still the microphones is going to be under each instrument. But I'm going to add um, a seventh um, thing here, which is just audio. Just so we can kind of think about it. Audio. <coughs> I got some metal stuck in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a beautiful little message here from Dan Hart. I'm amazed how much I learned during these streams. Had a PM training lately and bought uh, the memory jogger based on your streams. Thank you for streaming the whole process. That's that's so yeah. wonderful to hear. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, because it's it's daunting to come out with something as on the surface unexciting as an Excel sheet or a spreadsheet, and then people like you who are actually finding some value in these streams you 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 get me you keep me going as well so it's a it's it's a super nice uh, flywheel of feedback loop here thank you for being part of it um i feel also when people send me design suggestions that i know won't work for either reason that i'm learning from each and every suggestion so also the suggestions that are um, outdated because we moved on from the idea or that are just not going to work because I see an obvious flaw. It reminds me of why I want to do it differently. And I'm learning so much from that as well. Probably seeing me try to make an efficient like Excel sheet and kind of failing sometimes. Maybe that's helpful for you in the same way. <coughs> um So my last thing here is, uh, so if the crank handle comes here, and then after the crank handle, 
we have the crankshaft, right? Uh, no, the crankshaft is here. I'm just thinking where in the PBS to put the... Maybe we should just have all the modules and then all the interfaces. Because there's not going to be a mod interface between each. Huh. Or the interface is just always in the group. Yeah, the interface is going to lie there. Um, okay, we'll get into it later. So now I want to... Uh, a last thing that we're going to get done um, before we can call this um, uh, done is the little legend. So who was it who said that? Doro, I think. Yeah. I'm I'm going to add the legend here. So create text here. Text. Legend. Not talking about you, Hannes. <laughs> this time. Wow. Since this uh, backhanded uh, was not even backhanded. Since this fist blow of uh, grading my hair. I don't feel particularly like over <laughs> over generous with uh, oh well what can I do so box a box is box equals module um Ah. <laughs> we can do so much in this program. <laughs> Too much. Arrow equals interface. And my arrow has to be uh, a sharp line. Um, what is it called? Full line, full line arrow. Does that work? Okay, arrow interface. Um, dotted line. Meaning, uh, what is that meaning? Is that interface? No. Dotted line equals, that is when, when just um, group belonging or something like that. Okay. Uh, it means like, what is this actually? This is a um, category. Okay, yeah, uh, a group. Category relationship, group, group, oh, chat, help me out. <laughs> group, relation, grouping, category. Uh, be belonging, what is this called? Like Body. Sub-assembly, attribution that you're in. Uh. Category. Sub-assembly. Category. Chat said. Um, I'm just going to call it category. I'm not happy with that, but that's okay. We Membership. have... Membership. <laughs> yeah, category bel belonging. Yeah, that's implicit. Um, did we have any other kind of symbol? We've been pretty... Yep. Bernard's dotted line equals module hierarchy. Satish says independent modules. Mm, almost. Just related. Dependency. The organ guy. Dependency. Category re relation. 
dependency. It's not a dependency. It's just a map. It's a loose connection because they're they're in the same category, kind of. Rabbit one hundred one module category. Yes, that's the one. Thank you, Rabbit. Module category. <laughs> the nuances we are getting into on these streams. <laughs> you have to absolutely love it. So I think this is the only thing we have. Um, I mean, double-sided arrow, two-way interface. I can do. I can do that one. Um, double arrow, two-way interface, like the flywheel. That's kind of neat. Uh, dotted line module category. We're using this block diagram um, to start this, create this product breakdown system. And I'm going a little bit outside convention by also listing interfaces here. Is audio okay? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. And um, I kind of want to... So t m my top question currently... We can actually see it in um, the, let's go over to the known unknowns matrix. So one of my top questions that I'm battling with at the moment is marble size and material. And I want to kind of <clears throat> express this question in our product breakdown structure. This is not normally how it's working, but I had an idea over lunch uh, that that's the next step here because I need to contact... Uh, Specuma, the bearing company who has nylon covered, who's, um, they're working with RGP Balls, a supplier of plastic covered steel balls. And um, after deciding that the vibraphone should have 37 notes, I think the marble size and material is another very big fundamental question. So I kind of want to express that by uh, filling in some things about the marbles here. So, you know what we should do? Yes, let's make the first ever next level um, block diagram. Woo so, and already my, my enthusiasm fell because I don't know how to do it. I have to take my sweater off, hang on. There we go. Oh! Throwing down the gauntlet, are you? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, um, because this is fun, because we, we are dealing with marbles, which we have, where do we have them? We have them on under... Number six? Yeah, reprogramming and extras. That should be called maybe loose parts. This uh, loose parts and extras. What about that? Loose parts. Removables. Is Removable. A... I think I'm going to change name here. Remove. Uh, removables and extras. <clears throat> Go to PBS then. Yes. Good. Um, oh, we have not new comments here. I think. <laughs> um, removables and extras. So, marbles will have an interface with a vibraphone because they're hitting the vibraphone. And this is so fun because then we can use this input process output framework that I was taught yesterday to kind of like get in control. And I also want to build out this document more. So I want to use this as an example and learn how to make this document. And <coughs> uh, let's see, too much taco spice on my lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're daring each other to put taco spice on everything we're eating. This whole week is taco week. <clears throat> so far, everything has become so much better, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't fail with taco sauce, taco spices. Apparently not. 
Um, so we're going to make. I want. I want to kind of learn how to make these things interact. So we're gonna interact with this O two O six vibraphone module. So where do we express this interface? Um, should I maybe break down? Let's break down the vibraphone. Yeah, maybe let's break down the vibraphone. The MVP, yes. Yes. So I'm going to create, I'm going to remove all this because this is all sketching. Boom. Are you seeing this? Yes, kind of. Um, <clears throat> see if I can get this one away. And then I'm going to rename this uh, to... 0206 vibraphone. So now we're gonna go one level deeper. Oh. Jake's, Jake Sheath is back today, the aviation expert who joined us yesterday. And here he has, let's see, there we go. There could be a different line style for marble relation. For example, the marble dropper has a marble relation to the vibraphone instead of a mechanical relation indicated by a solid line. Mm. Mm. So it's 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 a line. That's interesting. It's a line that is. But um. So actually, my hand. Maybe I should be in this block. Where are you? Where are my interfaces? Where are you? My hands yeah. and my feet. Should we do a Martin? <laughs> or we should do a performer? Because I'm part of the machine. That's what... Uh, there's a beautiful comment in the design requirements about seeing the machine as an extension of... Um, I'm going to read it a little bit quickly. Um... I lost the name of this beautiful... Um, it's less a machine than it's an extension of you, a tool, like Doc Ock's arms. Your invention is not a machine at all, but an extension of your arms, a tool or system that allows you to play more notes, more instruments than humanly possible. Woot woot. I believe that if you had posted a video of the marble machine playing all by itself, no one would have been interested. And honestly, on the music, mechanical music, Instruments museums that I've been working with, Spielcock and Siegfrieds, all respect. After a while, you're like, okay, we get the drill. And you're like, yeah, not another song. <laughs> but so it's true. You are the performer. Is it a coincidence that Marvel Machine is a loose homonym for Martin Bolin? Um, actually, your comment here, um, what was the name of the avionics? Uh, Jake Sheath. So the the way the way I, so Jake means like the marble is not connected but still interacting. And then I immediately thought my hands are not connected, but they they can they can connect by gripping like a crank handle. So I start to think, where do we put? Also, no name has a follow up on that theme. Just color the boxes that directly interact with the marbles with a different color. Mm. <clears throat> the marble color. So. Oh, yeah, you can color the line. That, that's good. I, I didn't think of that. So you can probably also, f yeah, you can fill and stuff. So just to try it out, you can do these. Oh yeah, that's oh, nice. nice. And it's nice. Um, on the other hand, I wonder if we need that granularity. So I think I think on this high top level, I think just an interface is an arrow, and then how that interface is acting, it's going to be defined inside that arrow. So I think it's just a little bit too. Um, zoomed in to granular, I think is a good word for it. But where do we put me? I should have been zero one, <laughs> right? Um, should we put me as zero eight then? Yeah. Okay. 
the machine can quote unquote work without you? Uh, can? Kinda. No, not. There's no electric motor anymore. Uh, That's true. It's called operator. Operator. Ah, the operator. Operator. I'm not gonna put myself in there. No, because it could could be me, you know. Yep. Yeah. Boom. So operator. A line like that. <coughs> And then we have, this is going to be kind of nice. 08, 01, and you know what it's going to be? Left foot. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to give this little chime here. It's because our dear friend Slice of Sparta Again. is in chat. Trying to send a little super chat, but YouTube is telling me I've reached the daily maximum. Oh. Try again tomorrow. Guess I'll try again tomorrow. Let's go, guys. Woo! We, I, I realized after the stream yesterday, Slice of Sparta, that you sent like a massive, massive super chat. Uh, I just want to say again that it's really appreciated. It's going, the, it's going to go directly into the development of this machine with the caveat that if I fail... Um, it's still going to go into the development of this machine. Um, I, 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 it's really nice that you believe in the project and want to support it. And great that you're testing out the limits of these systems that YouTube has. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Gretzky Hall of Famer achievement unlocked right there. It's, it's, it's magnificent. Left foot, right foot. Satish says here, Martin, you're not a module, you are an extern external interface. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, these boxes are used a little in a little loose right here. For example, extras, it's a category. I do think I'm a module though. I think this is worse, like transportation is not a module and removables and extras. External interface. I think the commenter uh, here on the design requirements, I think the point here is that it's not an external interface. It's not a standalone music box. Um, so I think I'm a loose cannon, <laughs> like the marbles. Um, externals, could that be something? Should I be in 06 here? No. <laughs> Removable. <laughs> am I the drive system? Am, am I the music control? I'm in all of those. Let, let, let's do it like this. 03 is... Left hand. O oh, four is right hand, and here I'm not even joking. Eyes and ears. And as Lee Smith said, don't forget your brain. Eyes <laughs> and ears. It's input and output. So it's cool because, for example, I need to see, like, this is no joke. I need to see where the machine is to know when to pull a lever, which means there has to be an interface from the machine that shows me graphically where the machine is with numbers that has to go in through my eyes, being processed in my brain, and output is pulling a lever, for example. So this is, like, not so far-fetched um, to think about. Something I, I learned from the audience in, in design requirement is the user story. Yeah. So start like, how is this machine going to be used from different people's perspective? So from a stage hand that helps with the transportation, from an audience member that goes to a concert and listen and look at the machine, to the operator uh, uh, that plays the machine live on stage. Um, and don't forget the marbles journey that someone suggested also a fun way to do it 
eyes, ears. I don't see another... I don't see any other interactions between the operator and the machine. Okay. And Slice of Sparta just with a nice follow up comment. That's all I want, Martin. The best thing you can do with our support is give this thing your best possible shot. We believe in you and Sir 3K. And a heart. No, that's, that's lovely. Right back at you. Let's see if I can do a heart here. That's, that's exactly what I felt when... There we go. <laughs> it's beautiful, Hannes. Thank you. Um, jack of all trades. <laughs> master of none. That's me. <laughs> that's exactly me. <laughs> that's me too, uh, by the way. Um, so that's exactly what went wrong in the, on the previous machine. I like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this into the PBS. Um, what went wrong on the last machine is that I kind of was so sure that I would go on to make it. So I, I felt I kind of promised success. And now I'm promising the process. Yep. It's the only thing I'm promising. And Inuyasha says, Martin, the operator should be one level above the marble machine because you are, you are interfacing with it and after it, it plays your inputs. <sighs> That's maybe a mm. So from in a programming language, I see what you mean here, but I'm doing a strange... Um, uh, what is it called? Bastard child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is it called? Yeah. So uh, and, and Strange like mix between a PBS. Uh, a Frankenstein PBS. Yes. And Rolo Film says something here. Force, U is the input. Music is the output. The rest is the moral machine, I think. Yeah, so there's so many different ways of seeing this. Yes. So um, I, agree with, I agree with all the ways, but um, I think right now... The reason I, sh I showed it in the first stream also, I, I'm, I, wa I want a structure like this. And in this PBS structures, um, it's always one thing at the top. And then you kind of break it down. So it's not a flow. It's Yeah, this is not a flow chart. Um, so I should actually uh, kind of say that down here in the legend. Legend and notes. Legend and notes. Um... Let's just do some text here. Um, this uh, block diagram is not a flow chart. It's a breakdown system. So what we're doing here is that we're trying to find out the different parts of the whole puzzle. And for example... Um, there is no flow there is no flow relationship except between the arrows yep i think and important question from nico b should the angle grinder be a component <laughs> hopefully not this time right the angle grinder will will rest safely in its case you know what we should do what, hannes what happened though oh. Slice of Sparta comes through anyway. <laughs> a house built on an angle grinder will fall, but a house built on spreadsheets and diagrams will go on a world tour. Let's go, guys. Cheers. Woo! Amazing. Thank you. You, you overmaxed the system. Okay. Now we see what you've done here. The system just budged. They're like, <laughs> we can't hold this flood back. You know what we really should do, Hannes? We should make it possible so you can bring... Because I'm gonna go so much back and forth. Or should I open? I'm gonna open two browser windows and split the screen, yeah. maybe. Or send me an email with the link. Uh, but then I'm gonna ask you all the time to zoom around. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna make a new setup here so we go to the screen um, in the meantime. Yeah. And Tom's Money Magic, can I ask you how your name became H3K? I can't figure out the 3K part. Uh, the 3K part is because of a recent upgrade. When me and Martin live streamed uh, from France, I was connected through an iPad and my name was Hannes2000. And with this new physical body that manifested for me, I, hence my name now is Sir H3K. Living and breathing. 
There you go. And meanwhile, I have a split screen. I don't know how beautiful this will look on your screen. Let me fix it a little bit. So I had a CAD part a little bit figured out how I was going to stream that. And now when I go into the block diagram, I haven't done enough thinking about how to stream it because I'm ju I just want to work. So thank you for the patience with with me working with the stream setup in parallel here. So now I can have the windows next to each other. This makes so much more sense. Um, operator, let's add this. And this was nice also from Yakira Brophy. This definitely feels more promising. I was very pessimistic when you started Marble Machine 3, but I'm now very keen on where this is going. Having the limitations to begin with was genius. Oh, that's so nice to hear. It's it's um having no limitations to begin with, he clarifies. Ah, having no no limitations. Uh thanks, Yakira. I, I went through this. I, I totally understand what, what you mean. It's ever appreciated. I think I think separating ourselves from the previous machines is a very hard thing to do. And it just dawned on me when we were looking to the machine. When I made this picture about the one, two, three machine, I never realized before how similar the Mar Machine X looked to the first machine. Yeah. And like also, everyone is expect like when I show ideas uh, that looks different, uh, the audience reacts um, automatically by uh, surprise, and we don't like surprise as humans. So, I also think like clearing out any assumptions, starting from real scratch, is 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 more promising. Um, and in the beginning, I was. I was still had some naivety in me when I started a CAD like four weeks ago, three weeks. I had a lot of naivety. I, and then in CAD, I just saw issues and I felt I can't solve them. And that, that kind of led here. Um, eyes and ears. Eyes <laughs> <laughs> and ears. That's, that's how we drive a car. You know, we have uh, two cameras on, on, on a tripod that can pivot from side to side with very, very slowly. And we also use our ears a little bit, so operator. Okay, cool. Um, so now let's go and see how we can define. We started on this vibraphone thing. Um, vibraphone. So I want to get to a vibraphone mallet. So what is, how do we break down a vibraphone? We have Yeah, Bernard's weight. Why are we adding body parts? <laughs> <laughs> and this is for the operator, also known as Martin. <laughs> because we're, we're listing all the interfaces. Yeah. And um, we have to have a complete input process output for all the interfaces. And just like a marble is interfacing with a um, vibraphone bar, like this, bling, um, the operator's hand is interfacing with the crank. Yep. So... Um, it, it first I was a little bit should it be in here and then for example if I need to know where the machine is the eyes have to interface so there has to be an interface so a dial with numbers that show the operator where the machine is and it helps um, picking up design requirements that otherwise would be forgotten um, and Amy Soyoka Operator should have mouth for the drinks from the cup from the cup holders to go in. <laughs> <laughs> and that is um, that is funny. And I just mu I must click on this from Larry Samarov. I have to say I love you, Hannes. <laughs> you know what? I love you too. I love this co whole audience. It's so amazing just sitting here. You're so positive. You keep me going with my positivity. We're all in this together now, supporting the brilliant man next to me. He will make it. We all know it, right? Brilliance or craziness. We, it's, it's maybe, maybe. Should I a, just mute your microphone? Maybe a mix of both. <laughs> <laughs> it's your role to hype things up. It's my role to pretend to be humble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 0 to 06. So I'm going to go with bars first. So 
now I want to share this in a little bit of a bigger screen. Uh, it's ugly. Ugh. So what do we have on a vibraphone? We have the bars. Pipes. The resonators. And what's so fun is we don't need to build all this. No. Off we're gonna, the shelf. We're going to buy them and we're going to leave them as they are. Except we're going to cut the vibraphone in two parts. But that's that's something else. We have the resonators. We have... Um, Vibrato, is that part of it? Yeah, I, I think that's inside the resonators. Inside the resonators. But we can do frame. Frame. And then if we break it down... So here, I want to go kind of deeper. So if we break... Um, so let's do... Um, let's do a line like this. And I think... Um, So if we need to go really deep here. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. I'm going to list each and every one. I'm not going to do it now. Um, okay, maybe we should have a list here done. This thing. So this is... 02, 06. Can I do 02? Yes, like this. No. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this should be like this. Bars. No, I need to group them. This is a little trite. I think it's a it's just a little boring, but it's the this is this is just where we are right now. This is what's needed. Um I want twelve. Oh it's not going good. So I'm thinking about how to group all the variable bars. If I sh first should group them in top row and bottom row, I think so. So zero one. Um, zero one, um, top, um, white keys, and then here we're gonna have F four, etc. G4. I'm not going to do it now on stream because it's a little crazy. Yeah. Um, Just remind me and audience about the microphones. They were supposed to be with the instruments, right? But is it in this sub-assembly? Or is it outside this? Good. Microphones is up here. Good. Well point. From Toby, eight, eight, eight can. Oh, four. Uh, microphones. Vibraphone microphones. And Pascal fifty nine three hundred. Don't forget the sticks. Is perhaps not in this, but they should be in the removables. Mm -hmm. I guess your mallets. Very good point. So we go up here. And they're in um, music stencils. Very good point. Love that you're pointing these things out. Um, 08. Uh, manual mallets. Vibraphone. Manual vibraphone. Ah, oh. a vibraphone. Vibraphone. 
let's just call them mallets and we know that they are um, man dot abbreviated manual mallets um, there we go awesome awesome suggestion that's exactly what should be there let's add it let's keep updating our we're on 0608 is there one row below oh you're not seeing this oh sorry <laughs> there we go accidental mole does someone keep a count that's that's difficult Man, you're all mallet. Spectral piano. When do they usually look at suggestions? Is it off stream or a specific day? And we try to do it once a week. Uh, this week, probably we're gonna do it tomorrow. I think. Um, but Go maybe through the Dropbox. Spectral piano. Are you referring to inside the document or the sent design requests or all of them? Um, because I start to think that we should actually also do weekly, go through all the doc all the comments in the documents or something like that. Yeah. In a weekly... Uh, uh, review day. Yeah, so people feel that there is a back and forth and yeah. things are not getting lost. Um, manual mallets. We're planning on making a set time each week. So people who are interested in that can tune into that that show so you know that the, the design review is kind of friday afternoon or something could be kind kind of fun it's also a very fun fun segment for us always so much inspiration manual mallet is in there and we were going for a vibraphone so we were here this is so hard to see for you enhance let me work more with my stupid interface <laughs> Let me give this some more space. And uh, this maybe is working for you. Um, so here's a line to this module, I guess. And I, I want to separate uh, white and black keys because they're going to be in two different rows. Um, oh, yeah. That's why I'm doing doing like this. They're also going to have different. So this is going to be 02. Black keys. And this is... Wait... Oh, a lot of numbers. Anyway, that's okay. That's how it should be. And this is F sharp for... Shouldn't it be zero, zero, 002 for the actual part? Ooh, mm, oh, no. That's in the old PBS system. But maybe okay. you are... I don't know if we need that. I'm, I'm going to think about that. Anyway, now we have uh, our first key here. So we're going to have... Now we want to express that a marble is going to hit um, this note. And of course, we don't have to have a special interface for all 37 nodes. So we can we can connect the interface, I think, with this module, 020601. So let's get that thing into our PBS. Um, so we and to clarify interaction with marbles, perhaps just do a PNG with a marble on the on the dotted lines. <laughs> we can have marbles all over the diagram. Oh, you mean here in the diagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. <laughs> you can have marbles dropping everywhere. Probably, probably we can have a <laughs> just add a circle in the thing. Oh, that would be nice. Um, oh, god, I can't find the menu item. 
So we have O2 O6 O1 bars um And where do we put the interface? Do we put it? I also want to make the marble here so we can then connect them. So we have marbles as a main category. And O6, O3, O1. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to call these marbles again. So it's the category and then it's the I'm going to assume right now that we only use... Let's call them vibraphone marbles right now. Because these are the marbles that we know. Maybe we're going to use them for all of them. And then it just becomes marbles. So here is my thing. First of all, I want to use this um, document to add a lot of more information. So um, let's just start very briefly here. To put uh, material, outer dimension, inner dimension, blah, 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 blah. And what we're going to do is that we're going to freeze this row. Um, so view, freeze, one row. Is it only the first one? Okay. So then I have to put this one. Uh, sorry, you can't move rows in or out of frozen section. Turn off frozen row first. Okay, view, freeze, no rows. So these headlines up here are going to be centered. And I'm going to freeze these headlines, which is a really nice trick. So if you freeze this, now when you scroll, it always stays with you there. Oh, nice. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? It's gorgeous. You can scroll down. Gorge. Gorge. <laughs> you can scroll down here. And um, material, 2BD, OD, TBD, ID, non-applicable. Um, probably we should just do this line. Or NA feels like we really gave it some thought. I'm going to center all these uh, cells. And then I have a cool idea, because these are things that I think is very important. And I think we can do some conditional formatting to always have the cell turn kind of red when we write TBD. Oh. Um, so. Hardcore coding right now. That, this, is the, this is the coolest I've ever become. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out, Sir 3K. <laughs> this is what Sir 3K is best at, making me feel like I do not. Conditional formatting. Format cells if text is exactly TBD, then we want the um, cell to turn a light red. Uh, done. So now if I go to a cell here, TBD. Boo. Oh, wow. Yeah. What about that? Oh, we can also do if cell is exactly n slash a, it becomes green. Oh, we use green in these. Um, oh, it's just annoying, isn't it? With a lot of like Christmas tree, we <laughs> we take that away. So what what I mean is that we can look for. The reds. We can look for the reds and we can try to remove them. Yes. So that is one way of just like um, clearing all the reds everywhere. And that can be like, I need to uh, contact Spacuma to talk about the marbles. I think the marbles are very, very important yeah. to know where we're going from here. So I have to start to do research in, in what marble material and what size. And... Then we can do fun things in this document that we can do also supplier. Um, we can also even do states. So now I'm like uh, pro like progress or what is it called? Um, 
we can even do some project management in here, which I think people might. Most often they have a lot of different uh, documents and I'm right now I'm just planning to make one ginormous document. Oh, yes. Because that's how I work when I can have everything at the same place. Mm. Um, but maybe it's going it, maybe it's going to blow out of proportions fast. We'll that's see. That's what we're all about here. <laughs> so and now, check this out. This is my plan. Now I can make what I did for the crank handle. I can make um, an interface here. Um, so I take these lines and I put them here. So and the interface is from this part. It's going to be a lot of numbers. And I love the chat bringing the positivity here from Richard Lang. Nice to see there are no marbles on the floor of the diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I wasn't showing what I was talking about. And no. also here from Pascal. What about the funnels into the PBS and diagram? Yep, they are. Are they in there? I think we have them. Marble catch. Marble catch. Yep. Okay, there we go. There they are. Um, marble collect. Doesn't that seem like it's easier? Marble collection. Marble collection. It feels with marble catch, it's like maybe we can catch them. Marble <laughs> collect them. We're going to make sure to collect all of them. Yeah, yeah. gotta catch gotta them catch all. Them all. <laughs> I have to rename this now marble collection um so here's my here is my over the top i have an id input process output could maybe be better expressed in the top line so we don't get so many lines Walk the line. I'm heading out for a quickie, Martin. Yep. You uh, now you get some time to think without me interrupting. Yeah, we're <laughs> gonna miss you. Come back soon. Um, I think perhaps this idea I had here is creating too many, too many lines. Because this document is going to explode. So what if we instead... What if instead do this? Interface. And then we do tick boxes. Um, maybe too many tick boxes is stupid. Um... Input, process, output. Um, this one should be named name. And this should be um, number. So, it would be nice to have maybe all this space. I'm thinking about which which uh, which uh, curve to put them on, even to put them on here to the left or put them up there. Um, because what what I want is a place where we can write and talk about the interface. Like uh, what the input should do, how it works, what the process is doing, how that works, and how the in output is, where the output is going. And since we learn to group, no, I'm, I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm going to remove this. Since we learn to group, we can hide everything into one thing. It's better to keep it very vertical, I think. Um... 
So then we can have a description column. Description, maybe. So let's do the exercise. Um, interface. So almost here comes the sign requirements, right? In so now we're mix now I'm mixing a lot. Probably I'm going to get a little bit um criticized for this um that I I mix a lot of things into the same document, but it's just it feels it feels good right now. Maybe when it's exploding we have to separate separate everything later. But I'm actually starting just a new way of working, so it's it's more of me learning how to work this way than it is of me actually creating the document. And redoing a document on the plan later is going to be easy. So description. Um, wait, I, have, I haven't filled in the other part. So this interface goes from marbles to virophone bars. So this action describes when a marble hits a vibraphone bar. Vibraphone bar. Um, so the input, I guess, would be... I have to fix this number here, so let's quickly check. Uh, that's why I wanted to make this vibraphone thing back here. So we have... 020601 02 So we have like a unique number. I don't have to put the number here. Let's just do this. Oh, let's just not put a number here. This is better. See if I can show it to you a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to leave these cells blank here. And here's like an interface description. And this is the name of the interface, number of the interface. And here's the name. I think this makes sense. Let's just call it an I. Oh, that feels good. And if I zoom up, and if I pull this down, you will also see the frozen row. So here in the description cell, um, for the input, I guess I guess it is marble impacts the bar, the bar, um, process. Uh, Marble transfer and energy into bar. <laughs> let me know if let me when Hannes is back. Let me know because I, I I don't have a screen for chat here. So soon Hannes is back. He can read read your comments on this. Output. Marble. Um, sound waves of bar plus. Marble bounces in new direction. So some of the energy is transferred into sound and vibrations, and some of the energy um, stays in the marble and, and helps it bounce away. Um, so what's interesting here, I'm just going to try something here. Insert one column to the left. Then we can hide the columns and stuff also. Uh, requirements. 
I'm thinking if we can list a require requirement right here. Um, so for example, marble shell bounce and clear TBD. Let's see what happens if I do this. Um, marble shall bounce precise enough to enter. Um, and then we can add the number of the collection system. So we can be, we can always talk and this is why it's nice. So we can always talk about other parts with the correct number. So where did we have it? Um, 0305. Marble show, oh, you're not seeing again. There we go. To enter. Where did you go? Where did you go? There. Okay, let's not marble collection. No, I'm always going to use the number together with the name, like super strictly. Um, is this in the wrong cell? Oh no, that's, that's a little ugly formatting. So the requirements for the output of this interface is that the marble should bounce and clear. Uh, it has to clear the vibraphone plate. Clear all clear the vibraphone plate and other vibraphone plates. So if there's a row of white keys in front of the black keys, for example. Um, so that's, that's a must have design requirement and you're still not seeing what I'm doing. Ah, da, da, da. Let me fix that for you over here. Here we go. I have good news, everyone. I'm hearing. Hype is here. I'm hearing. Hype is here. I'm hearing that we're not alone anymore. Um, and then we can we can go on. We can go on in the process. We can say, mm, mm, marble transfer in energy into bar. I'm gone for a couple of minutes, and what happens then? Slice of Sparta says, Martin, that conditional formatting is without a doubt the <laughs> single coolest thing I've ever seen anyone do. Hydration cheers. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if you if if it was a joke or if you actually meant it. Regardless, it's wonderful. Um so the sound requirement, um, marble should bounce precise enough to enter. Oh, marble impacts the bar. So requirement here is that marble shall hit bar at a point within, what should we say? We've reached the caliper level, everyone. Oh, things is getting exciting. We're building and measuring a point 10 millimeter either direction within hit a point plus minus 10 millimeter. Marble shall repeatedly or consistently 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 hit bar 
at a point plus 10 minus 10 millimeters plus minus 10 millimeters and then the process I was thinking about the output here um, marble shall produce uh, well, and then I'm gonna get homework on this shall produce a um, sound wave of sound wave of at least TBD decibel. This is what people want me to write, <coughs> to give a decibel number. I'm not going to do that. That's not how musicians work. And you nev I never heard in, the li in my life a music producer go into a drummer and say, oh, can you just go two decibels lower on the Hyatt? That's just not how musicians talk. So even if engineers talk that way, uh, all your engineers out there has to realize that a little bit we have to apply music language to this. So I'm going to give some, because something that I learned is that design requirements has to be verifiable. <coughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna make this requirement verifiable for a musician in a music studio. Uh, so sound wave um, strong enough to produce valid signal to noise ratio. Do we have a number on that? No. Do we know it when we hear it? Yes. Um, so, um, I hope I am, I do think this kind of makes sense. And then, so input marble shall hit consistently process marble transfer energy into bar i don't know if i have any requirements around that um i'm gonna add another one here um marble shall produce a well balanced sound wave frequency wise not too sharp not too mellow and again i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna make, give an equalizer diagram on this and say it has to look like this wave because that's just ridiculous i know what i mean and it's we're just not going to um, go overboard with that so for example rubber ball directly on this is too mellow you can almost not hear it you can't hear it actually uh, but metal, like this spoon, too sharp. That's why, so that's going to feed into the marble design requirements. And speaking of sharp, we have Tom Wegener here with a question for you, Martin. Can you explain why the whirling marble machine, aka band in cylinder, can't work? You can easily do space division in 2D and work with size and shape requirements of modules and interfaces. Thank you for the question, Tom Wegener, and, and for the support. Um, whirling marble machine, band in cylinder. Is that a crazy sketch where the whole band is inside the cylinder? Um, yeah, there must be a suggestion, right? The yeah, whirling yeah, yeah, yeah. marble machine. Yeah, it, it is one of our suggestions. Maybe you can pull it up on us. I can see if I can find yeah. it somewhere. Yeah, let's, pu let's pull it up and, and, and look at it. It's a little... Um, um okay so we have um kev anon so there are some comments we have 25 comments here in the this is a good comment from you kev anon i'm just gonna finish this first um let's see here um so we have an interface maybe the name of the interface Marbles. Maybe the name should be. I'm doing the description properly. Marbles hits vibraphone bar and bounces away. So. Uh, 
And then since the interface is here, under the marbles, we, we, we don't have the interface. So I'm thinking I'm done. I, I just wanted to practice to kind of add like design requirements into this list here. I think, I think it can work. Um, so the bar's done. But what's confusing me now is that this sound requirements are actually more about the bars than about the marbles. Hmm. Yeah, this is maybe a little... But maybe I can use this as a method to, rem to, to write the, the requirements and then move on. Uh, move on from here. Okay, cool. You know what I should do now? Uh, I'm going to review um, the comments because I see some really useful stuff in here. Um, and I have right here now the, <laughs> the whirling marble machine. And can band in cylinder. I think. I think. I think it's. Just because it's not form from function, I think that's um, that's the very basic uh, thing. Um, the the um, the rotary uh, CNC idea I have is um, not going to be able to machine something that big. <laughs> <laughs> like I love the idea, of course, but um, yeah, I think just because it's not form from function, it. You could make you could probably make it work, but it's not form from function. So Kev Anan is here suggesting. So this is now I think we're on something good because Kev Anan says on the operator, we should design it so that anyone can use it. And I think that's a super good um uh, design requirements. So um What if we do this? Insert a row below. Um, so D point R. Sign requirement. 08 and I add here under requirement I had <sighs> yeah um, yeah I'm co it's it's tricky everyone it's tricky it's such a big system I'm trying to build and I'm trying to think about future and here but it's always I just have to do and if I do I will I will I will actually meet meet the problems. So I'm going to write them here and then we can move them where they should be. Um, marble machine shall be operatable by anyone with um, by anyone shall be designed to be operable operable by anyone i don't really know like what would differ me like i don't want to design it i don't know what the difference between me and someone else would be um when you think of it So actually, wait, do we even need this design requirement? Sir 3K. <laughs> no. So I think 
basically like if if we design it for for me to use i think most people who are not like half my length or who maybe don't have all um, limbs and stuff there will be some people who can't operate it but i don't think i'm, I'm gonna of oh, oh, for example let's let's put like every instruction in english like we're already working in english so thinking of it it's actually better to design it for me and then everyone who is kind of like me can then operate it to or shall be designed to be easy to operate but that's not verifiable by as many as many different no it, it's not a good design requirement so i love the comment but i realized that it's i don't i should not have it as a design requirement ears kev anan hi martin have you decided on your vibraphone this will be useful for my design ah yes 37 notes off the shelf vibraphone so fun to hear you're working on a design kev uh, so that is validated. Uh, Kev has another one. We could use the programming wheels to store the other equipment needed, meaning less space is needed. It's also cost effective. Thank you. Um, but um, the git. Uh, oh, it's out of screen. So this is a this is a good example of a, of, of an idea that helps me understand uh, how I want to design this machine. But the added complexity. Is would not would not make up for the gains. So um, I think um, let's see the other comments here. Anthony Mac at here to avoid document blow up, you can make the interface lines collapsible. Select the interface rows, then pro then press Alt Shift plus right arrow. Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, Alt shift right arrow. So I wonder if that's the same as group. Um, I'm gonna try it. Alt shift right. Ooh, that's a short command for group. Hannes three thousand. Wow, that's brill. Earlier in the stream, we learned the grouping, and now I learned the short command from um, Anthony. So if I click here. Um, we can hide them. Boom. So I think when we want to read, I think I'm going to leave the um, headline for each thing. But when we want to read about the design, uh, about an interface, we have the input and outputs hidden right there at a fingertip. <sighs> it's beautiful. Steel skin 667. Marble machine shall be designed to be easy. To operate by Martin like humans. That's pretty good. Actually. And then Lee Smith says Martin like humans equals Martians. <laughs> can you bring that can you bring that up? Um Marble. I think we should stop saying marble machine everywhere. Shall no, then we don't know if we're talking about the operator. MM shall be easy to operate by martin like humans love it and shall be it has to be verifiable it has to be um so easy is a trigger word <laughs> shall be operate operable operatable operable no that's wrong operatable operatable good um <coughs> let's check all the comments real quick uh subsystem feet adapt to floor counterweight attachment point we had this yesterday we we have them in the feet if the beaters don't interface with the marble gates, they may as well become an 
instrument. Um, music control, loop beaters. Ha! Huh. This is a good point. Maybe this is on the wrong place. Registrators, program switch, loop wheel. Loop beaters are... No. No, I'm gonna leave them here or are they going to be in the instruments? I'm gonna leave them here. Programming wheel. Prog wheel and registrators are part of one music program read system. Similar to instrument, you may have many programs. New pro... Yes, that's good. Music control. Input, conversion. Consider program selection as a separate input, not a consequence of the registration. Okay, I think that was because maybe Christian thought it was a flowchart. True, input that switches program readout channels. These people are a little bit too smart for me, <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of programmers. I think it's some software program language in there. Um, and I think there's some confusion going on because some people look at all this as a flowchart and some people look at it as a product breakdown tree. And for me, it's more a product breakdown tree than a flowchart. Marble cycle, subsystems, feed, output feed to gate. One is a loop. Two as a linear system. This analysis, analysis needs to be expanded. It's, it's not just a gate that consume. Every component has a max and min consumption rate that must be matched with their neighboring components. This is good stuff. The problem is complicated by the fact that the consumption rate of each component is variable. A current analysis should be performed for an entire circuit to ensure that no tubes explode as happened to the MMX. Very good. Also, due to the variability in marble flow, this machine simply cannot work without a reservoir that has the capacity to either continuously fill or empty during an entire song. Um, so where do we take some information from this? Max and mean consumption rate. So that's a very nice design requirement. Uh, Thank you both. I'm just going to reply. And and uh, I want to put that in somewhere. Um, just, just as a reminder. Uh, inserted row below. And now I can actually make notes in this document. So we're not having notes somewhere else. Um, requirements. Max and mean consumption rate. I'm just making a note here. Include everywhere in marble loop. This is brilliant. This is exactly what I missed on the first machine. If we pull this through, I think I'm going to be a little bit proud, honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kev is, is chatting with me in the document I kind of love it um, Hang and Martin do you think having one pipe split of to 37 pipe would be viable you think having one pipe split okay I don't really understand what, what I was related to Kev um, kick if the audio system is the same across all instruments, you can have two systems. Instrument, audio system. Okay. Um, subsystem, input conversion, marbles to music, signal capture, output analog. Show more. Yes, so this is all about audio stuff. Flywheel and brake control the motion RPM, don't they? Motion control systems. Um, also, instead of calling it flywheel and brake, just call it motion control. Um, so we have music control and we have motion control. It sounds very... Um, let me just take a peek and see if 
that's something to dig into. Um, where is the flywheel? Drive system, I think. I think they're good there under the drive system as they as they are. Um, I'm gonna resolve that. Sage is Kuma. Audio video can be an interface provided by the Marble Machine. Yes. Centralized output cable. We read that one before. Um, the crank handle is the interface between operator and the crank. If it fits into the hand of the operator at one end and fits on the crank wheel in the other end. Exactly. So I, lo I love this clarification. Um, um, Joshik V. Tumana. Um, and let's actually act on that. And let's just uh, add the... Um, between operator and the crank. So what I'm doing is that I'm putting the interfaces on the input, on, on, on kind of the... As a signal chain, I'm putting it on the side where, where it kind of starts. So let's go down. First of all, let's actually hide this. Um, let's hide these. And uh, what did he say? Shift, Alt, right arrow. Haha. <laughs> Boom. We have our little group. And I'm just going to go down to the operator's right hand, I think. I'm going to crank the machine with the right hand. So ergonomics is a big thing in, in this machine. So it makes total sense to to add add these things. So I'm going to say that we have we're going from no, I missed one. I want let's regret this. I want all four rows. I want all this. There we go. So we're going from 0804 to crank was 0801, I think. So it's right hand crank. Uh, our crank handle actually wait crank handle is another yeah that's oh one oh one oh one <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo -doo. so what I'm doing right now more I'm like creating a system that I can believe in um, for the future oh and I also decided to take all these away And I just called them I, didn't I? There we go. That looks better. So the input is Martin's muscles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. Process transfer of extreme power. I'm not going to make jokes actually here. It's no joke. Input um, movement from hand process transfer of movement transfer of energy output rotation of crank what do you think sounds legit <laughs> and then we're going to do the magic there we can hide that oh no I started premiere by mistake <laughs> oh no oh no So, we have only a few comments left to resolve here. Crank handle. Yeah, that's 
you're sick. I, t- I acted upon your advice. Pedal, crank, motor are all motion inputs. Zero, one, zero, one, motion inputs. So uh, this is a good command. It's like motion input, motion control. Um, pedal. So, yeah, I see what you mean, but it's not really the way uh, we're, we're structuring this document. Um, Thomas Wögerbauer. M0101 for module, SM0101 for submodule. So the cool thing with this numbering system is that you see that it's a submodule because it has more. So you see this is the second level because it has two numbers. And you see it's a submodule because it has three numbers. And when it has four numbers, it's a submodule under that. So this what you want, Thomas, here is already built into the system without the letters. Um, Drive system. Oh, Shikcheng is my name. Thank you. Now I can pronounce your name because you've been giving a lot of great comments here. Subsystems, energy in RPM control, output gear. Shikcheng is my name. English name Ludovic. Uh, call me L. It's call me L. Oh. You can call, call me Mal. L. Call me L. Uh, I would argue that it could be blind. Example defining the spec of gear output. Let me see here. There's been a discussion here. Don't forget to visualize the interactions between the system. Energy, energy flow from gear train to the programming wheels and marble lift. Yeah, so this is kind of the interfaces and it's the flow chart idea. And I hope that we're going to have flow charts um, inside the more so I think I'm gonna put all these flow charts in the more um, um, sub sub block diagrams I think that's where the flow charts can be I would argue that it could be blind example defining the spec of the gear output similar to how we define power outlets in another system that depends on that output as an input USB charger plugged into the walls, blind. I'm not really... I don't know this programming language so well, so I'm not... <laughs> as long as both are within, there's no need to visualize. Due to it being mechanical energy, you get geometric constraints, and in music where tight synchronization is key, I think it's important. So, love to see the discussion. And what I'm taking away from it is is that flow charts. We're gonna we're gonna work with flow charts in the in the future. It's gonna c- cut off Premiere there. Okay. Um, here we have some more comments. Uh, so let me see if I can show this to you. So Kev is having a design discussion here. <laughs> if we're adding lever, what would each be used for? Could one to Yeah, so this is not really this discussion for right here. So I meant that for the vo- oh, an explanation. Because Kev saw that I didn't under- really understand. So I meant that for the vibraphones we would need one set of marbles for each one. So would that marble divider just uh, work? Oh, you're in the loop system. Okay, yeah. So that's also isolated loop. I don't. I don't know as now. I think what you mean is that instead of catching all the marbles in one big thing, just to catch them in an individual loop, and that would be a design requirement that the marbles has to fly very precisely. This will lead to the same issue that we had on the first machine that they have to go into a very small opening. And I want to allow the marbles much more um, resilience. So they can bounce anywhere and still everything goes well. Which means that i rather try first to make a normal marble divider on the top of the machine or something like that. So right now, n- n- no. Um, could we add an extra crank to maybe a music box? Maybe, just joking. Okay. So um, thank you, Kev, for working on your own design. I'm looking forward to see that in the Dropbox. And we have cleared all the comments, actually. So... This is not where I wanted to go. Uh. <laughs> Always true. Okay. Um, so 
this feels kind of great. It's humble beginnings, humble beginnings, Hans yes. 3000. Let's take a look at our uh, at, at this again. Um, items to design requirements. We're kind of done in a way. Um, what are people in chat? What has the been discussion been going? <coughs> Well, discussion is somewhere in between. Is this overkill to do these requirements now or not? Yeah. Focus on some more technical solutions. I think people are just eager to get to see the work put in on the MVP, on the vibraphone. But this is unshorted territories. For you, Martin, where we you really sit down and start preparing stuff from scratch. So, this is a good sign that you're doing this thoroughly right now. I think it's a very valid discussion, though, from chat. Like, when, when is it? Um, when are we? When are we? Uh, when are we? Uh, efficient at what ratio of preparation uh do we stop being efficient and it's something that we need to learn during the way we can't we, we can't know it from the beginning um so i really appreciate that sentiment i think i i, and I totally agree um let's do this do this Luis Arrigoni, major design requirement. Being physically operable for extended periods of time without physically damaging slash exhausting the operator. Especially if you do not include a motor. Mm. Spot on. Love it. This is actually something... Um, keep that one up because... No, not this one. Here... Um, if we, um, there is one of the reasons why MMX didn't work is if you remove us for some time, Hannes, the red one next bottom to the right, super heavy to crank because friction and powering too many things. And this is what Luis uh, is exactly uh, answering to in this thing. So thank you. I'm going to um, involve this design requirement right away. And then I'm in this browser. It's a big mess right now, but it's okay. Um, ba -da 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 -da. So, let's see. Here, design requirements regarding the operator. So see how good it is that we even have an operator in the document here now. Um, ah, Luis. Oh, Luis have made a comment <laughs> here as well. Can you show me the comment again? Um, operable. Physically operable for extended periods of time e g a full 2 hour concert without damaging exhausting the operator. Great job, Luis. Yeah, fantas fantastic, um, fa fa fantastic uh, comment. Safety should be the number one priority design requirement for all physical interfaces with the machine. So um, I'm going to do, here's kind of top level. Um, I'm going to put it as, as number one, control, 
safety at all physical interfaces between human and machine. There's an album title right there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm going to resolve those nice comments, uh, Luis. Oh, it's here as well. So maybe it's Louis. Louis knew how to get to you by putting it as well in the chat. Yes. Here we have from Call Me L. Uploaded very simple subsystem. Just keep in mind that MVP suggestion is just an exercise as removing everything possible. It's not a suggestion for your design, only thought in terms of system, not parts. In other, okay, so that's, we're gonna see that call me L in the design review. A Warner, um, oh yeah, this was what I promised to read in the beginning. This is perfect for now. I'm gonna read that now. Testing, please go over it. Okay, so now I'm back to these two um, long suggestions, but since I'm learning right now, I think it's a very good uh, point for us all to learn a little reading uh, moment from an FPGA engineer. Can you look up what that is? FPGA? Yeah. Professional Golf Association Engineer. I think it's something with golf. Is, is, is my guess. Field program, Field Programmable Gate Array. FPGA Programming engineer then okay if Let's if see. l if a warner have managed to dump this down to my level i'm i'm gonna be very impressed by that the fpga engineer is an electrical engineer specializing in the design of field programmable gate array integrated circuits now that is something hi martin I'm an FPGA engineer. My entire work consists of modules interfacing with other modules. So I felt a look into our design philosophy and process would be helpful at the point you're at. Because I work in digital electronics, not everything will translate exactly, but I hope a more detailed look gives you at least one bit of insight. Take whatever you think will help your project and discard the rest. So nice. Philosophy. Most modules contain smaller sub-modules. We all know this, but thinking about sub-components as their own module simplifies the process. This is called hierarchical design. For instance, the drum machine module includes each individual drum, which themselves are modules. The drum machine module itself could be part of a larger instrument module, or it could be its own top-level module. This is completely up to how you want to organize and define your modules. So uh, right here, I just want to explain to people, this is exactly what I've learned from the PBS. So the way I'm thinking is that each level here to the left is a module. So 0101 crank is a module. 010101 crank handle is a sub module inside crank. Uh, we might have to make a custom bearing or something inside a crank handle and the new numbering system we're using from Rudy Grand Garage um, you can see what level so one figure on the drive system is module on level one two is on two three is on three and I think we already have some um, over we're gonna have like a lot of we're going to have like six or seven sub-modules in, in the end. So this is exactly how I'm thinking. Every module connects to other modules with interfaces. This is interesting. I thought only some had interfaces. This include the other modules within a parent module and or the interfaces of the parent module itself. I have to read that again. This includes the other modules within a parent module and or the interfaces of the parent module itself. Hmm. For example, the drum machine interfaces with the marble droppers via a group of falling marbles. From this falling marble group, one or two falling marbles will go to each drum. The marble is the output of the droppers and the input of the drum. It will then also be the output of the drum and the input to a funnel. So 
So... So maybe... What I'm thinking about now is that when I put the, um, the interface here of the falling marble, I started to talk about the bar. So then all of a sudden I wanted this output What confuses me now is that do I need to put the same interface over at the vibraphone bars? Let me read on. Um, the simplest fundamental module can take two forms. A module that you designed and built by hand. A COTS module. This simplify your work. Most uh, COTS... Most... So can you see what can you see what that is? A COTS module? Probably a repeatable module. Most COTS modules themselves contain sub-modules, but you don't have to worry about these because you know they already work they are as supposed to. For example, a snare drum has a snare, a head tightening system, etc. But those already work, so you don't have to note them. You're just using a snare drum. It stands for commercial off the shelf. Ooh. <laughs> Commercial of the shelf. These simplify your work. So, um, for example, in the PBS here, we could add a column uh, which is um, type, and then we could make, um, for example, for the vibraphone. <coughs> Where is it? Um, have I hidden the vibraphone? Here. There it is. So we could make like later on, I want to have like this. Um, there is a data collection. Um, data validation so um, list of items so we can have custom cots we can have um, maybe, maybe we should just have those custom and cots um, save and then you get this drop down menu and you can choose. And this is obviously, we're going to try as hard as we can to have as many cuts as we can. Yes. So we could give ourselves like um, a nice color if it's a cut and a little bit less nice color. <laughs> no, and I'm serious. <laughs> if it's custom. <laughs> And we can kind of like gamify. So like, is there a way to change things from custom to coach? Because it's it's such a great explanation. I'm so happy for this text from, from A. Warner here. I'm going to read your entire name if I go up here. Uh, no, I only see the A. Warner. Um, because... It's true. When I buy a snare drum, I don't have to think about the tightening of the snare. When I buy a vibraphone, I don't have to think about the muting of the of the thing. When I buy like a bolt, I don't have to think about the thread. Yeah. If I make a bolt, I have to think about the thread. Um, the more standard a module or interface is across the design, the more easily it can be used. For example, if you use the same marble dropper design for vibraphone and drums, that is the easiest. If you use the same design but tweak slightly for different marble sizes, this is second easiest. Using a different interface for each drop is the most work. I feel this community could write like a handbook for design together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why I want to start a DAO. Um, not about Vintagatan, it should be decentralized. Just a mechanical, audio and software engineering DAO. Um, and come together and write things like this together. 
and just give out like a handbook in, in, in design and stuff like that. Because this is beautifully put. Um, the more standard it is. You should be able to test each module on its own. I've heard this before, actually. But I never thought about it. I heard, but I didn't like take it in. Whether this is in the context of having built the rest of the modules around it or by manually creating the interface because the other modules haven't been built, designed yet. Example, dropping marbles by hand or some simple device because the droppers haven't been built yet. Or manually loading the droppers because the marble transportation system isn't fully designed yet. So this was for from headline philosophy. And this process. is the, this is process. Yeah. We have to be in love with the process. In love with the process. You all just want to score. You're not in love with the process. You have to give the reference. What what should people listen to? Everybody wanna be a beast. Motivational speech on Spotify and also on YouTube, I think. Yeah, that's a good one. The first step is to define all of your large modules. Aha, uh aha, -huh, aha. Uh -huh. This is what we are doing right here. Um this may or may not include some sub modules, but sometimes sub modules come up later in the process as you realize their need. Um, each module at any level can have a block diagram with the module in and out. Sub modules and connections between sub modules and all the in and out and interfaces. At the end of this step, you should know sans revisions, every functional part of your machine. Wow, this is kind of awesome. This is very applicable to my process. The second step is to define interfaces between your modules. You don't need to know exactly how a module is going to work to design the interface. For example, knowing that you need a marble dropped on the drum is agnostic to what, what, what it is that is dropping the marble. However, you do need to know what interface is properly you do need to know what the interface is to properly design your module. For example, knowing that you're dropping marbles on the drums and need them to fall within a certain area so you can collect with one large funnel will influence the geometry of your drum module. This may change later due to limitations of your module, but it's typically the right place to start. Third step is to design and test each module. Focus on one main module at a time and start the detailed design from the most fundamental module up. Uh, and it's funny because this is brilliant, but I just want to say third step is to design and test each module. We have another comment to go through, which is also long and beautiful. And it's from Amir. And Amir is also writing about testing. So super important issue is testing. So this is where my ears are opening up when I see two, two smart people like saying the same thing <laughs> independently from each other. Um, the third step is to design and test each module. Focus on one. Before integrating anything, it should be tested, simulated to make sure it works. Yeah, so that was a step that I missed on the machines. I tested it on the machine after welding it on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing, <laughs> if you're doing physics simulations, that should be good. Yeah, it's so funny. And, and also in the Discord, everyone was like, they started even in a testing rig group who were thinking like, we have to do tests. It's um, standalone tests. Uh, so actually, if we go to our project chapters and timeline, I think I have a whole missing chapter here. Testing. Testing. It's just... I'm going straight from digital design completion to supply chain and manufacturing. That's the, there's a missing missing chapter here. And the viewers have spoken and I have listened. Um, let's insert one more row. So this is going to be chapter 2B. Chapter 2A. Testing. Um, testing all modules independently. 
uh, hmm. We can't test them without manufacturer. Like, huh? Okay. Yeah. And call Mel is in chat. I'm actually writing test cases for a huge system as we speak. Bottoms up. Woo! <laughs> oh, call me Al. Um, bottom up. Are you meaning, are you referring to the bottom up and top down? Or are you just saying shares? <laughs> Bottoms up, I hope. Because I drunk. Writing test cases for you just um, I drunk, I drank. Okay. I drank wishful thinking there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so chapter three, okay. I'm not going to go into this, but I'm, I've added it to the project um, chapters. We're going to see in what order. We have testing people. Yeah. Um, before integrating anything, it should be tested. If you're doing physics simulations, that should be good. We already had those actually in. The fourth step is to connect all the modules via your interfaces. Initially, this will mean adding a sub-assembly into your overall CAD model. The fifth step is to test full module behavior. So, f fun that A. Warner here actually think that physics simulations can take us far. Which is pretty, pretty, I'm pretty happy to see. Because a lot of people are very skeptical about what we can do there. We have a co collaboration with the Swedish company Algorix.se. I have a computer next to me, custom built by uh, Sebastian and Janssen and the team at Linus Tech Tips for their own sole purpose to actually do physics simulations later. And I think there will be a lot of things that we can... We can find a lot of mistakes in physics simulations, I'm absolutely sure. And then we will still have some few, but hopefully minor surprises in the real world. Fifth step is to test full module behavior. Steps three to five will be repeated for every major module. Last, you put it all together and test the full machine functionality. Again, I'm not expecting the process to translate 100% to mechanical work, but it will help you think through what will and work work, what will and won't work for your process. What a brilliant! Mm well-written text and this gives me an idea i'm gonna make a collection of all this no name <laughs> i will oblige you of course you can have cheers no name cheers everyone out there yeah maybe we should pan around but of course when i'm showing texts it's um better um you know what we i'm going to collect these beautiful contributions that are valuable for everyone at a kind of um, links or something. Some like education. What should we call it? Design best practices. Design best practices from contributors. So it's a kind of um, um, resource. So it's actually the beginning of a book, right? Yeah. I think I think um, I think we should write some kick-ass books together. I don't have to write them. You you can write them, and then we publish them in our own DAO. Nothing to do with Vintergatan. It's only the community. Just some uh, absolutely pure golden ideas there for me. But uh, someone else needs to uh, be interested in, in um, pulling them through in the end. Because I'm going to be busy building the machine. Um, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put... So people don't really understand when I'm talking about that. I'm really talking about starting something new that is not Vintergatan. It's just I'm going to be the biggest ambassador for the DAO. And I'm not the leader. It's a community. It's a decentralized organization. Um, it's just this energy people sharing. It's just this sharing energy that is going to be, I think, building a nice future. And I'm just so excited for that. But maybe I should be like, so it's, it should be have its own name. It should be like engin the engineering DAO with three subdivisions like audio, mechanical, and uh, software. Love it. 
Design best practices from contributors. Where I'm going, I want to find it again. It's in the PBS, isn't it? Here. Um, so I'm going to take this link from Warner. First of all, I'm going to reply. Um, this was so helpful. I've added it to the newly created um, best practices section. Thanks for taking the time. Um. Bringer OD. As a software developer, thinking in terms of modules and interfaces between them before starting the implementation helps a ton for creating good design and a testable system. We have it right there, people. We're doing good. It's... Um It's quite a lot that I have to. Yeah, it fe it feels great. Let's edit this link. See if can't can't they just suggest a title here? What a beautiful title! It's like a design blog. All of a sudden, we have going on here. <laughs> a slice of Sparta again with the. Optimism. Again, Hannes, the job you do running this stream is incredible. The studio setup and switching is extremely well done. And aspiring YouTubers should be taking notes. Great job, guys. Thank you so much, Sparta. Always positive. Yes. It's um we're very happy. We worked we worked hard and for a long time with the with the setup. Yep. And since the first stream, we haven't we haven't had one issue. No. Like, w the few issues is when we forget to push a button. Yeah, it's actually our fault. We can't blame it on any program, yeah. sadly. It's not Fusion's fault. <laughs> so let's now go to the other um, contributor about testing here. Um, I just want to uh, check the name again. Uh, it's in the program breakdown system, and it's up here. Um, this is from Amir Amoyal. Testing, please go over it. And this is exactly what I hoped for. The people would like write their little essays like this. Testing, super important issue is testing. Every product being made needs to have clear requirements of what defined as working or not working. For example, your phone's volume bu up button is not working. That's, that means that the whole phone is not functional. In the MMX, you came to a conclusion that you need X marbles to be played for Y time in order to declare the drums as working. This is a very basic set of requirements just to get a feel. For each module, whole machine, you need to define the following. Define test case. Test case must include parameters like test setup, period measurement setup. Set expected value for each test. Less than expected, module is defective. Above the ex expected, the module is working properly. Bonus. Set expected value of high performance. Comment. I know you don't like the electric motor, but please think about adding it for testing and adjustments of timing, etc. That's a good point. But but by the way, I'm a digital signal processing engineer, basically electrical engineer. Two electrical engineer coming in with the good <laughs> stuff right here. Amir, uh, this was very helpful. Thank you. I've added it to um, the education section. Boom. And, and here for clarification, there, can we just call it best practices? This may not only be for design. Uh, that's, that's, that's a good idea. And let me see if I can find the home button. Front page. Um, I'm going to done educational best practices. And you always good when you misspell educational. <laughs> it tells <laughs> a lot about you. Um, so I'm going to name this about testing, about testing. So there you go. 
if you send in um, like this kind of thought through things, you might make it to the educational section, everyone. Whoop, whoop. And and this is also for me. I can go back. I can go back and read from time to time. This needs to be in eleven. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I also feel like um, I also have in the back of my mind like I know something that I definitely should not procrastinate anymore. It's that I have to contact Spekuma, and this is going to be in the next. So Spekuma is a Swedish uh, some kind of bearing supplier. Um, seven, they've been at it for f seventy years, and they have actually sponsored. The previous machine so we have a little page on their website here and we realized that the covered uh, marbles um so we have um let's see pro product let's go for english products and we realized that they have plastic marbles um where did we see them balls yeah, in balls, yeah, that you have stainless steel. Here, plastic rubber balls, and especially the PA. So, um, so the plastic balls with steel core with nylon cover <sighs> is what I'm very, very curious. Sounds about. sexy. So I have a homework to, to reach out to Spikuma, um and and have a discussion with them to see uh, about this and i think that's uh, what i'm going to do right now after after the stream but yeah to bring it all home i think we are let's take a look at what we have done um, do, 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 here let's zoom out come a long way today I think we have, anyway, lifted on more stones. Yeah. And um, I love here, we have more comments. Ethan is commenting on the divider. We will be able to talk to each other and you will be able to give... Like, this document is really, really providing a good interface between us. And um, I'm, I'm feeling excited, but I'm also anxious to get going and soon get back to CAD, but not too early, not too early. So thank you everyone for being here. And thanks to the boss, Sir 3K. Wow. Over there. Thank you so, so much, Martin, for that. And thank you, as always, to the lovely people out there for watching and contributing nice messages on chat and actual brilliant suggestions. And thanks to our beautiful moderators who helps out in chat. You are wonderful. You know what? This will be it for us for this time. And we will see you in the next one. <laughs>